So the Nets welcome back their starting catcher. He made an immediate impact, driving home the winning run to clinch the series against the Dodgers. Tonight, another key component returns to the mix. Doug Fister makes his regular season debut. The Nats and A's meet for the first time since 05 on a Friday night in Oakland. Welcome to Oakland. First time the Nats have ever been here. Haven't played the A's since their first season. And yeah, there's a curly W coming across the bridge to the O.Co. Coliseum to watch the Nationals and the Athletics. Former Oakland A, F.B. Santangelo, Bob Carpenter. And it's a ballpark that works against hitters. Almost everything about this place makes it tough to hit here. So maybe not a plat bad place for Doug Fister to make that comeback. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to be facing nine hitters tonight, and he would love to be in the lineup hitting himself because he may be the Nats' best hitting pitcher. But when you talk about this series and how it sets up, it sets up for pitching. A, because you know, both staffs are very, very good. Everybody knows the national staff, but the A staff is every bit as good. They're bullpen fantastic. And when you talk about the park, it plays huge at night, lots of foul ball space. Balls don't carry out here. So the reason the A's are so good and have been so good over the years is they grind out at bats. You're not going to hit home runs in this ballpark at night. They get guys on. They keep the line moving. They foul a lot of balls off. So a big test for Doug Fister right out of the gate. And we're excited to see him pitch. Yeah, and they're 7-9 and nine at home. So for some reason, they're not winning a lot of home games. But they're the best team in the American League on the road. All right, Doug Fister, 44-50 and 50 career. We got to see him on our first Mass and telecast back in March down in Vieira, and it seems amazing that we haven't seen him since. Yeah, back today from that light, right latch strain, and it's good to see Fister back on the mound. The sinker, if it's going well, it's really the only pitch he needs. He gets right on top of it. Tall guy, has downward plane too. He's got a slider curve change to go with it, but the sinker key for Fister, and we saw him for a short time. We've seen him in the American League, and the A's are very familiar with him. Doug very familiar with the A's, and he said, you know what? These guys are tough. They grind at bats out. He's been waiting for a long time for this start. He's going to be over amp, and I think the key for him tonight, Carp, control the emotions because an amped up sinker is a flat sinker, and if he's too excited, he has a chance to be up in the zone. 12 career starts against the Oakland Ball Club. So if it is a pitching dominated series, could come down to the bullpens. Soriano's been perfect this year. The Ace have had a lot of bullpen issues, but this man, 25 consecutive scoreless innings. The Nats and the Ace. Next. Or as loud as he could. It was
Customizing your world. And by your local D.C. area Land Rover retailers. Visit DCAreaLandRover.com for special lease and finance offers. Great to see Wilson Ramos back with the ball club. Some young Nats fans over by the friendly dugout on the first base side. Only problem is they're really, really far from the field when they sit over there. Visit trainsearch.com to find your local train comfort specialist dealer. It's hard to stop a train. Really hard. So at 62 here in Oakland, it is gusty. Up to 17 the winds through this cavernous ballpark. And the humidity up a little bit. Adam LaRoche gets to DH tonight. He's hitting left-handers. Well, not as well as Worth and Rendon, but doing okay. He's at safely 16 of his last 18 games. So you're looking at a man who's got the seventh highest batting average and the third highest on base percentage in the National League. The Nats will be facing an old Washington farmhand and a Nat who made five starts back in 2011. Part of the Geo trade, that's left hander Tommy Malone. Yeah, the fastball from Tommy Malone, just 86 miles an hour. He'll cut the fastball at 85, so velocity really not there. He was a 90 to 92 guy when we saw him in D.C. Curveball at 74, changeup at 79. He's been up in the zone, and he's been getting hit. Tommy Malone likes this ballpark, though, as any pitcher would. In his career, he's 12 and 8 at home with a 308 ERA and road career for the ace, 13 and 14 with an earned run average of almost five runs a game. And set the defense for the ace behind Tommy Malone, Cespedes, Gentry, Reddick, the outfield, Lowry, Donaldson, left side, Sogard, Moss, the right side, and Derek Norris behind the plate. So the battery involved in the Gio Gonzalez trade, Derek Norris drafted by the Nationals, Tommy Malone drafted by the Nationals. So a former national battery tonight for the ace here in Oakland. Yeah, Norris fourth round back in 07. Out of Goddard High School in Kansas, he had signed a letter of intent to go to Wichita State before Nat Scout Ryan Fox got him. And now these guys wearing the green and gold. Here's Denard Spann, knows all about this ballpark and knows a little bit about this pitcher. He's faced Tommy Malone three times in his career with two base hits. So the A's, five over 500, a game and a half up on Seattle in the West, and the Nats four over. A half game behind the Marlins. They're back on the road tonight at San Diego. So let's see how they can do away from Marlins Park. First pitch of the game is upstairs. And we're underway at 10.07 Washington time. That's the crew chief, Gary Cedarstrom. He has the plate. Kerwin Danley, Lance Barksdale, and Mark Ripperger around the bases. Right in there to Span, who steps in at 2.50. Denard, though, over his last four games, 7 for 17. Well, remember Nat's game plan lately against soft toss and lefties. Let the ball get deep, go up the middle, go the other way. It's been very successful. And Malone last time out against the Red Sox on the third pitch. Four innings, gave up six runs on six hits. Walked four, struck out four, and he gave up three home runs in just 77 pitches. And remember with the runner on first base, he has got a great move. One of the best left-handed moves in baseball. He's four and one career in interleague, but he gets a lot of run support because the ERA is over six runs a game. One and two to span, and Denard will take that one just up and away. Nats has a ball club, third in the National League in hitting, fifth in runs, fourth in home runs. You better not be thinking about home runs in this ballpark this weekend. Leave that for Arizona. Next stop. And a breaking ball has popped up to the left side. Josh Donaldson will let the shortstop. Jed Lowry call him off. First out of the game. So just underway here in Oakland. The Nats since the start of, well, since really June 2012. Three games over 500 in interleague play. They're three and two this year. The A's have won nine of their last 11 here against National League teams. And against lefties, well, it's just a great ball club. And that's a great segue to Anthony Rendon, who leads every hitter in baseball, hitting 484 against Southpaws. These game notes are so serious with that music in the background. I, I feel know. like I have to look at them. I was like, I was, ready, some, I was ready to run through a wall for our yeah, producer I'd there. I'd get in trouble if I don't look at them. <laughs> that was pretty 
dramatic. But it is puzzling. Oakland only seven and nine at home. They've won 13 games on the road. The Nats on the road are eight and six. And a strike call by Gary Cedarstrom, who looked at it for a moment. Inside the numbers with Jeep and against lefties. There they are. Rendon and Worth bookending five very good hitters. And Malone works the bottom of the strike zone. One and two. And yeah, forcing the fastball and he'll cut it in. He likes to get you aware of that cutter on the inside. It opens up his change up away. He had a good take by Anthony. And the count on that 87 outside will go full ahead of a couple of hot hitters. And Malone has to keep the ball down into a corner tonight to be successful here. He's a guy that doesn't wow you with his stuff. It has to be about command. Target in, and Rendon will foul it away. Anthony checks in fifth and extra base hits, batting average of 295. By the way, the only Nats that have ever faced Malone span. And then on the bench tonight, Nate McLeod and Jose Lobaton. Everybody else seeing the lefty for the first time. 3 2 pitch. And Rendon will follow it out of play. We'd like to welcome those of you in the Masson family who saw the Orioles beat Houston tonight 4 3. Baltimore now 19 and 14. First place in the American League East. We are in the AL West as the Nats make their first ever visit to the O.Co. Coliseum in Oakland. And that's going to be strike three on Rendon. Under his hands, two outs. He goes with the cutter at 88. Look at the sequence. Mostly everything away. Comes in late with the cutter to put away Anthony Rendon. Pretty good pitch. Just nip the front corner of the plate. And that's a place that. Malone has to live tonight to be successful. Inner half with that cutter. Well, worth the other part of that versus left handed pitchers list we saw a moment ago. Third best in the National League, fifth best in all of baseball at 444. Batting average up to 313. On base percentage just under 400 for a right handed hitter who's using the entire park these days. He's the only player to rank in the National League's top five in slugging percentage, third, 532, OPS third, 931, batting average fifth, 318, on base percentage, like you said, 398. Tommy Malone missing three in a row here. And I know what my partner is about to say. Green light. If it's in there, swing hard in case you hit it. Loves to swing on three and zero. Oh. Jason does like to look at a lot of pitches though when he's seeing a guy for the first time live and in person. Well, he's Billy Bean's dream. Guy that works the count, goes deep into counts, high slugging percentage. He'll take the walk in. Jason Worth is aboard for the 16th time in the last 17 games. Batting in the fourth position, designated hitter. And tonight, Adam LaRoche, Adam LaRoche nursing that tender quad will get a chance to just get four or five at bats tonight, not have to worry about first base. Kevin Franzen will be over there tonight. Picked up his glove off the bench in BP to go take some ground balls. I said, You don't need that tonight. Put that thing away and rake. So the A's have a big shift on. There's 85 feet of room between Josh Donaldson and the third base line. He's going to come creeping in now. And LaRoche will take it, and it misses. And Tommy Malone thought he had a strike. And he, he needs that pitch down there. Malone career, 26 and 22, 68th start. He's gone 13 and 10 and 12 and 9 
his two full seasons with the A's. Emery's got that good move. And LaRoche will hit it over to where the third baseman is. A short way. And one runner stranded in the top of the first. Finally, Doug Fister on the mound for the Nats in a moment. The A's are hitting 250. It's only 10th in the league, but they're fourth in runs and they're fifth in home runs. Josh Donaldson is a converted catcher. That happened two years ago. Playing third base for them, he can make some spectacular plays at the hot corner. He's got power. Seven home runs. He's driven in 24. And obviously, with that number you're looking at, he's a clutch hitter for Bob Melvin and the Oakland Athletics as they take on Doug Fister, who's made 12 career starts against this team. Well, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is, Doug Fister. First start as a Washington National, and he is pumped to take the mound. Lives an hour and a half from here. Spent the off day with the fam, and now he's back on a major league hill, and he is ready to rock. And you see the career numbers on Fister. Two seam fastball, slider, curveball, change the arsenal. And like I said in the open, he has to control his emotions tonight here in Oakland. I think that's key. An amped up sinker is a flat sinker. It means you know, you're, you're so excited you throw it too hard and you throw it through the sink. And he looks like he's fired up right now. John Jason will look to fly ball to left. Got some carry on it. And it fooled Scott Hairston for a while. He had to go back and grab it. Huge ballpark. You need guys with legs in the, the outfield here. Well, once it gets dark, Scott Harrison, who's playing left field, can actually run in on that ball. But until it gets dark, it's a pretty fair ballpark as you see the outfield for the Nats. Desmond Rendon, left side of the infield. Espinoza, Franzen, the right side. And Wilson Ramos behind the plate. You'll see on Sunday, too, this ballpark plays small. And Kevin Franzen playing first base tonight. Tyler Moore sent to AAA. So Franzen looks to see a little more time at first. Bit unusual for the A's to have their DH leading off. And here's the shortstop, Jed Lowry, who in the original lineup this afternoon was the leadoff guy. That's right in there from Doug Fister. Looked it all the way in. Some good sinking action to that. And right on the inside edge. Strike two. He'll cut the fastball at times too, so he'll sink it, cut it, throw it straight. Go east and west, north and south. Move it all over the place. And he'll move his feet. The hitters, that is, Jed Lowry. And I think Carp the 6 8 is what plays into that downward plane that he has on the two seed fastball to where he gets the sink. So tall, he's right on top of him. And this one in the air to center. Denard Spann's going to back up a bit. And he's waiting for it. A couple of outs in the air to get things going. You might have heard Dan Coco 
inform us during the pregame show, Nat Sextra, that it's possible Fister could be up as high as 100 pitches tonight. And the early part of this ball game in a pitcher's part might give him the chance to go pretty deep. We'll see how it all works out. Well, uh, especially against this ball club that grinds out at bats, he'll take those early outs. Yeah. But I'm watching him right now and watching his mannerisms. And I've seen Doug pitch a lot in the American League. But this is opening day for him, and he's fired up. And you can just tell the quick movements. Even his delivery to me looks just a hair fast at this point. Get Josh Donaldson locked up there. And he's been working hard behind the scenes. He's endeared himself to his teammates by being one of the first guys in the clubhouse every day, working hard. It's good to see him on the mound. I know Nats fans today very excited to see their new right-hander for the first time. Donaldson. Seventh in the American League with seven home runs, top eight in RBIs. Quite a story, converted from catcher two years ago. He had 156 for the A's in 2010, didn't play for them at all, was at Triple A Sacramento the following year. And then something clicked as soon as he took off the gear. And as you and I and Mike Gallego and him were around the cage today, I think Mike Gallego properly said it best. He said, you were thinking too much about everything behind the plate. Kind of simplified the game for Josh. He's become one of the best players in the American League. Little chopper. Looks like a base hit. Fister will airmail it. And that's a runner that could end up at third because there are a hundred feet of space in foul ground here. It's going to be a single and a two base error. Well. I just got done talking about how I thought he was a little amped up tonight, and that's a perfect example of he's a little amped up tonight. He tried to make the greatest play in the history of the world on a little chopper right here. So Fister, a very good athlete, was a first baseman at Fresno State. And a little bit excited, a little bit overamped. It's understandable right now, even a veteran like Fister throwing that ball down the right field line, and you know, whether Donaldson stops at second or third is irrelevant. He's got two outs, and he needs to get. Brandon Moss. You can see him taking a deep breath, regroup, relax, and get in a stretch for the first time. Donaldson now three for three career against him. And here's Brandon Moss, who has all kinds of power. And he's two for three career against Doug Fister. Eighty-seven right side. And the count's one one. I'm not gonna lie. Doug's making me a little nervous right now. I'm excited for him. And the big hook inside. And a ball ripped out in the right field. And the A's have the lead, so the error is costly. Instead of a runner at first with two outs, Donaldson scores easily, and Brandon Moss has his 26th RBI. You know, Moss a dead pull hitter, and I'm surprised that they didn't have Ian Desmond on the right side field, the second base. Desmond was just a couple shades up the middle. You see where he's standing right there. And obviously, the Nationals have a lot more information than we do. Brandon Moss, a dead pull hitter, does a nice job of driving in the first run. Here is Ioannis Cespedes. Been looking forward to watching this young man play. Eight years with the Granma Club in Cuba. Stats not available for his first two years, by the way, but the other years he hit 300. Five times. And that's a ball to the right side for Danny Espinosa. Oh. Gobble it up. Pivoting to his left. And an error will be costly as the Athletics get two singles and take a 1 nothing early lead.
Turn of the Buffalo, Wilson Ramos, first pitch he sees off the DL, doubles into the gap. That was in the first inning. So welcome back, Wilson. And then in the fifth inning, a sack fly to Garcia Puig. That scored Denard Span. So a nice return for the Buffalo after going 0 for 3 on opening day. He goes 1 for 2 with a sack fly and a walk in his return. Here's our Honda do up, top of the second. Ramos since the start of last year. Lots of damage against lefties, Desmond as well, and Scott Hairston, who's made hitting against left handed pitchers his specialty at this stage of his career. So Ramos total on the season one for five, but he's going to go to deep short here. Scooped up by Jed Lowry. Got rid of it in a hurry, and he gets Ramos by several steps. Even with a catcher running, a very good play. And Jed Lowry, a guy that you don't think about range when you think of him as a shortstop, does a nice job right here on his first test going into the hole, taking a base hit away from Wilson Ramos, and Tommy Malone approves with a little golf clap for a shortstop. Nice play. So Malone's last two outs on the ground. Here's Ian Desmond. Who has a 13 game on beast on the base streak going? Well, he needs a 13 game on beast streak, too. Yeah. When he gets that going, watch out. This club's going to win a lot of games in a row. It's interesting. Desmond is at his best when he goes to right center. And Craig Gentry, their center fielder, definitely shading him that way. Might tell you how Malone's going to pitch him. That ball hit hard down the line and slicing. And right into the corner. Even in the corner, there's lots of foul ground. About 10 feet of it or so there at the 330 mark. There is 40,700 square feet of foul territory <laughs> in whatever they're calling this place now. Oh, and 107,900 square feet of fair territory in this place. 60 feet to the backstop. And the dimensions, you know, the dimensions not that big. Deep gaps, 388. From first base and third base to the center of the dugouts is 100 feet. And compared to Nats Park, that has 23,000 square feet of foul territory. Crazy. And the reason I said that is I grew up coming to this ballpark, watching ball games as a kid, and it was the Oakland Coliseum. And they've renamed it 46,000 times between the 80s when I was a kid and came here till now. And most people just call it the Coliseum. Yeah, it's the Coliseum. Yeah. And now they have Mount Davis in center field where you know, for the Raiders in their home games. And Desmond's going to look at that one on the inside corner. Two Nats have been called out on strikes here. Rendon and Desmond, two outs in the second. Yeah, the cutter from Malone at 88. Look at the sequence, everything away. And then he tries to lock you up in. And Desmond thought it was inside. Pitch track thought it was inside. Gary Cedarstrom, the only one that counts, thought it was a strike. Left fielder, Scott Hairston. Just back off the DL, and he's three for seven on the young season. That is hugging the line, and that's a fair ball. Bullpens are on the field here. It rolls right over the home plate nearest the foul line and Scott Hairston's a 500 hitter this year with a two out double. And for the first time ever at Oco Coliseum <laughs> slash Oakland Coliseum slash whatever the heck they call this place. There goes the no hitter. And I think that might be a good game plan right now for Nats hitters to where we were talking about against soft toss and lefties go up the middle the other way. If you get Tommy Malone out of there meaning he's coming in with that cutter pull him a couple of times. Then get him back over the plate. You're in business. So nice swing right there. A nice game plan by Scott Harrison looking in. Up to Danny Espinosa now to tie this thing up with two outs. Right handed batting 273. One more oddity about this ballpark. And I didn't know this until Ray Fossey told me about it today. The playing field itself is under sea level mm -hmm. because the surrounding parking lot comes to about the top of the lower deck so it, we're down in a bowl in the ground and nearby bay is actually higher than the playing field here. 
That's why the ball doesn't carry. You know, when you're in Colorado, you're a mile high. Here, you're below sea level. Gets cold here at night. Very damp here at night. And I think it's negative 390 feet below sea level, <laughs> unofficially. So we should all have scuba gear, evidently. Max Parks had got to be under sea level too. Yeah, it's uh, it's dug out of the uh, below street level there. Not sure how high the Potomac gets as it comes up from the Chesapeake and the Atlantic Ocean and all that. So many things to look up before tomorrow night. Now. Yeah. I'm gonna stick to fastballs and changeups. You go ahead. Two and one. Straight change, Joe's dipping down low, and Danny Espinosa has a three and one count. And of course, using the DH, so no pitcher on deck. It's the Nats' number nine man, Kevin Franzen, who's been outstanding as a starter this year, hitting 333 in nine starts. Good take by Espinosa to get to a three and one count. Let's see if he gets a fastball right here, first base open and two outs. Two one changeup as he throw a three one changeup. He goes that cutter in right here. Let's see. That's what I'd be sitting on. That ball high in the air to center. It's going to back up Craig Gentry. The fly balls, unless you hit it a ton, have no chance to get out of here. That's have stranded two and trail one nothing to Malone early. Doug Fister pitching for the Detroit Tigers came into that game 4 and 0. Dan Heron outdueled him, and the Nats would pound out nine hits in beating the Tigers, who had 12 base hits in a 5 4 verdict at home at Nationals Park. 5 4 win for the Nats, and ironically, that made their record 19 and 15, which they are this very day, one year later. And we showed that to you because we wanted to anti jinx Doug tonight in his first outing. But Doug will love to know that in his first outing as a Nat, we showed him getting lit by the team last year. <laughs> Somebody will tell him. Little pop fly to left. And Scott Hairston covers the fly ball by Josh Reddick for the first down. Had it all the way, not a problem. And next up, the former Nats farmhand we talked about, Derek Norris, who was drafted fourth round in 07. He came here with Tommy Malone, Brad Peacock, 
and A.J. Cole for Gio Gonzalez and a pitcher named Rob Gilliam on December 23rd of 2011. The 246 for the A's last year. Nine homers and 30 RBIs. Definitely wins the beard contest tonight. I mean, it's not even close. That is at the knees from Doug Fister, who threw 18 pitches, 10 for strikes in the first inning. Worth LaRoche, beard envy. Well, they also envious of his batting average, 377. Well, they're not far behind at 313 and 324. He's on a three game hitting streak with four for nine. So, last two weeks, getting a hit for every out he makes. Eric Norris is 25 years of age now. At some point, and I'll be curious to know after the game for Doug Fister, this is going to turn into another baseball game. Another game like he's pitched a million times, but right now it's his first game with a new team, and you can kind of see he's, he's, he's pumped. On a one two count. Here go the A's. Do they rub up more baseballs here than any other part in the major leagues? Because the Athletics have a reputation for fouling and fouling and fouling off pitches to extend their at bats. They actually have a station in spring training. It's called the Foul Ball Station. And when they rotate over there, they work. No, I'm just kidding. But they do lead. That's a good looking pitch, and he didn't get it. They do lead the majors in walks with 156, and they ran second in the American League on base percentage with 339. So, yeah, to your point about the foul balls, they grind out at bats, they make you work. A lot like nine Jason Worth in the lineup. Hmm. That's a good breaking ball. Sounded like a busted bat right off the end. Dennis Eckersley in the house tonight. That's really him. <laughs> He's waiting in the bullpen for a save. They have three large domed mascots here. Eckersley, Raleigh Fingers, and Ricky Henderson. The guys were joking with Steve McCaddy today saying, where's your tarp up there in the outfield? He had a pretty good year here, though. We're going to talk about the cat tonight right. and show him to you in an Oakland uniform. Rhymes with Mossberg, the guy that was giving him a little bit of heck before the game. There's Cat. Played in the clown shoes here in Oakland. That's what we used to call them, the white cleats, the clown shoes. Career record of 63 and 63. 3 2 pitch to Norris. Lashes a base hit to right. And I guess you might say that's where the 370 hitters live. Fouled off the couple, stayed alive. Ty Waller gives him a little congrats over there at first base. Armed Forces Day. The Nats and SAIC proud to present on Saturday, May 17th, 405 against the Mets. We'll be saluting our nation's military, first responders, those who put their lives on the line every day to protect us. SAIC will provide American flags to fans. They enter the gates before each patriotic series game. Nationals.com slash tickets for 202 675 Nets. Best looking spectacles in baseball. Right here. Eric Sogard, the second baseman, becoming sort of a, a cult figure around here. 27 year old infielder from Phoenix. There he is. Well, they gave all the fans glasses tonight. Sogard glasses. It was the giveaway before the game. I thought they were just excited to see me for the first time in a while, but it turns out that it's Eric Sogard night. And they gave everybody souvenir glasses exactly like the ones that I wear. <laughs> Those are dead on mine. Welcome back, FP. This looks like a 50s movie crowd with 3D glasses or something. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Well, as the, as the once was said in a movie, but it looks good on you. It's nerd night. I love it. 3 and 0 to Sogard, who has struck out only nine times this year and walked 10. He's two for eight against Doug Fister. Even playing a song before the game, talk nerdy to me. It was awesome. 
Almost and, I'm and I'm really glad you explained that to me at the time because I totally misunderstood. And in the air off the center. Denard Span just cruising over for it. This is the only park in baseball where from our vantage point no fly ball to the outfield gets higher than the grandstand. I cannot believe how high some of the Oakland Raider fans sit way out there. That would be along the far sideline. Yeah, I think high is the key word too. They're way up there. Yes, they are. Craig Gentry, 30-year-old outfielder, longtime Texas Ranger, checks in. And Fister's going to get him on the hands with a fastball. Severe damage into fair territory. So enjoy your Friday night with that one. Top three here. Talking with some athletics reporters before the game, they were joking, saying this is almost an, an inner squad game between the athletics and the nationals. These teams have a lot of common parts. They've made seven trades between these two organizations dating back to December of 2010. Tonight, the A's battery of Tommy Malone and Derek Norris, both former Nats prospects, Gio Gonzalez, Jerry Blevins, Scott Hairston. All former A's. Steve McCaddy, as the guys were talking about, all nine years of his big league career were with the Oakland Athletics. Even our guy FP made the last stop of his big league career here in Oakland. So uh, A's reporters were joking that the Nats are almost the East Coast A's because of all the ties that these organizations have. Yeah, Steve McCaddy right in the middle of all that. And, of course, we had to get approval from Oakland before we could sign FP four years ago. Well, they, they reluctantly, I might add, agreed. Well, up to Gio today, I said, you're part of the graduating class now. You're the alumni. Like, all the big guys that come back, Jason Giambi, Miguel Tejada, the guys that graduated from the A's system. And he said, well, so are you. And I said, no, no, no. I did not get my degree. They got rid of me. There's a big difference. <laughs> they got a lot for him. Kevin Franzen, 10 for 30 in nine starts this year. I will say this closing the book on it. It was the funnest time I ever had in baseball here in 2001. 102 and 60. Just beating everybody 10 to 2 every single night, winning every ball game. Bunch of young kids, 22, 23 years old, having a great time on the field, off the field. It was baseball heaven. Tommy Malone is really working the Nats right handers right under their batting gloves. That's his third strikeout. All of them against right-handed hitters. Yeah, it's all with the cutter in. Look at the book on Franz and pound him in. You see three pitches on the inner half. Franz and can't get to the last one. So Malone's got the cutter working so far in this one. Top of the order, Denard Span popped up to short first time. So the first time through the order, the Nationals go one for eight with a walk. 
Hairston's double, the only hit. They've got Spin being squeezed at the corners here. He'll bunt it anyway down toward the first baseman, Brandon Moss Fowler. All right, fans, if you're still awake, and I know you are because it's Friday night, tweet your photo using hashtag Masson Photos for a chance to have it shown in a future broadcast. That's brought to you by AT&T. By the way, the first place Marlins, who won five in a row, trail early, 2-0 at San Diego. They are 3-10 and ten on the road this year, by the way. And that's a fastball to the outer half. Topping out high 80s, but placing everything beautifully so far, Tommy Malone. So here comes that second time around in the order you always talk about. Yeah, especially in the interleague play, you haven't faced a guy before. And that's a guy's just throwing lollipops right down the middle. And you do your recon, you do your homework first time around, and see if you can make an adjustment next time. Span will have to extend up to foul that one straight back. Well, if he can miss some bats and sweet spots early, Tommy Malone has the capability of getting better. The ZRA is 5.86 right now. And Span will lift one to right. Josh Reddick waiting for it. Malone making it look easy early, but let's give it another couple of innings. And he will face Anthony Rendon. Now batting, number six. Anthony Rendon. I think it was Rendon in an introduction, so now yeah. they, they got it right. Somebody got to the PA guy. Yeah. I can't wait to hear him do Tanner Roark tomorrow. Malone, 27 years of age, from Santa Clarita, California, went to USC. I remember how highly regarded he was back in 2010 when he won 12 games at Harrisburg, 12 more in Syracuse in 11 before the Nats called him up for five starts. Here's where the big ballpark comes into play. Plenty of room for Brandon Moss. That's an easy out here. It's a souvenir elsewhere. And this one nothing game in the middle of the third. It's the old span right in front. They have closed it. It is being dismantled. And what a beautiful ride it was over the bay coming from San Francisco to Oakland on Friday afternoon. Yeah, it didn't take long at all. Come watch the Nationals. 
Take on the New York Mets on Friday, May 16th at 7.05. Our bus passed you, by the way. <laughs> Get excited about the second bobblehead of the season. The first 25,000 fans received a Wilson Ramos bobblehead. This giveaway at all gates. While supplies last. Get your game tickets, 202-675-NATS, or visit nationals.com slash tickets. That's not the bobblehead. That's Wilson. Bottom of the third, that ball pulled foul by John Jaso, the DH. Jaso, 30 years of age, he's a catcher who is DHing tonight. Part of the Michael Morse deal back on January 16th of 2013. Brought A.J. Cole and Blake Trinan to the national organization. So that was a three team deal with Seattle, Oakland, and Washington. And Jay so hot right now. Eight for his last 19 coming into tonight. 421 average. A couple of years with Tampa Bay, one with Seattle. Second year with Oakland. He hit 271 here last year in 70 games. Fister first two innings, 34 pitches, 19 strikes. And a ball hit well out to right center. Worth watching it. And that is over the 388 mark. Quite a blast by a DH in the leadoff spot. And the A's lead 2 0. How hard do you have to hit a ball at night here to do that? Well, it's still not night. Like I said before, the ball carries here before it gets pitch black dark. And you look at the pitch from Fister, it's up. Doug Fister, guy who's made his living down in the strike zone, throws a two seam fastball in the inner half to Jaso, and he makes him pay right over the 388 sign in right center field. So we wondered if the sinker would be up tonight based on emotions and adrenaline, and that one was. That wall is 15 feet high there. So you add that to the 388, and that is quite a blast for John Jaso's second of the year. And the wall comes right down to eight feet. Over to the gap in left center. Lowry flight to center his first time, and that's up and away. Jed Lowry. Part of a five player deal that sent Brad Peacock, the former net, down to Houston, where he's still pitching. That was February of last year. Went on to hit 290 for the A's here last season. And he set an open switch hitting record for doubles with 45. And hits 175. Double ear flap guy. Yeah. Yeah. You throw out all those numbers, I'll break it down for you. Double ear flap guy. Okay. Yeah, well he is a switch hitter. Well, that doesn't mean you always wear a double ear flap. I don't have too many of those guys left. And a ball hit pretty well to left. Scott Hairston will drift back with it. First down, bottom of the third. Tomorrow, another night game. Tanner Roark, a little earlier, by the way. And Sonny Gray, who's 4-1 with a 191 ERA. Geo goes against left-hander Scott Kazmir, who about a decade ago was supposed to be one of the best prospects in all of baseball. Had kind of a journeyman career since then. The Nats will have their hands full, and there's Tanner who goes tomorrow night. First pitch curveball to Josh Donaldson, who was totally ignoring that pitch. Ball one. Donaldson infield hit first time. He's three for three career against Fiston. Doug tried to make an impossible throw to first. And then the hitter ended up on third base and scored on a single. Ian Desmond to Kevin Franzen for the second out. Tricky little in between hop there for Desmond. Nice play. I'll tell you what, this is one of the best playing services in baseball. People talk about the Coliseum, and yeah, I'm going to call it that for three days. And what a older ballpark it is. The amenities, yes, but the playing surface, as good as it gets in baseball. The batter's eye, the backdrop for hitters, as good as it gets in baseball. I was talking to Ian before the game today. I said, you just automatically feel locked in when you step in this batter's box because. The backdrop here is that big dark green wall in center field and the ball comes out of it bright. 
This one high in the air to left for Brandon Moss. And Hurston just onto the track. So a leadoff home run by John Jason gives the A's a 2 0 lead. 3 4 5 ahead for Washington. Hey, Ben. Hi, Ben. Check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Right-hander Steve McCabe, blown away Minnesota Twins. Other hitters, engineering a 1-6-3 double play. And the cap was pretty good here at Oakland. 399 career ERA. Small hack with two strikes right there. Oh yeah. My goodness. What was that guy swinging for? There's Billy Martin congratulating right, him. Steve Ronnie, led the, the American League with 14 wins and four shutouts. In 1981, 16 complete games. Check that out. That's not a typo. 16 complete games. And if 14 wins doesn't sound very impressive for a whole season, that was a strike shortened season when he won those 14 games. Runner up to Raleigh Fingers for the Cy Young. And the year before that, he pitched a 14 inning game against Seattle and lost 2 to 1. A manager and a pitching coach would be taken to court for doing that these days. 16 complete games. I know I said it 14 times, but that just doesn't happen. It's a lot of CGs. Gamer. Absolute gamer. Two balls, no strikes to Jason Worth. He's had a nice comeback today, seeing some old friends. He doesn't miss a ballpark, but <laughs> it was just nice to see everybody. And hey, this is his home. Worth rips it and it's foul. Way out ahead on two and oh. Gotta make that play. Nice sliding stop, kept the ball in front of him. He's gotta make that play. I don't know, that was a hot shot. Got a glove. More foul room for the ball boys here, too. And the ball people. Ball dude. Sorry, nice try. Get him next time. And Worth will pop this one up to the right side. Brandon Moss. Has to go backhand as it finally comes down. Glad you're up with us late on Masson tonight. Here from Oakland. First time the Nats have ever played here. Bob FP and Dan the at the O.co Coliseum. Formerly the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. The Networks Associates Coliseum. And I'm sure I'm missing a few. Tommy Malone. Getting easy outs against a good lineup. Strike one to Adam LaRoche. Hit the ball up shortstop way first time and the third baseman right there, Josh Donaldson, threw him out, ending the first inning with Worth aboard, who had walked. Cutting, sinking, doing different things with that fastball. Yeah, more just four seam and cutter. And LaRoche with a check swing came back up and hit him. And that was the cutter right there. The 
job of laying off the breaking ball. becomes another called third strike victim. Four Ks from Malone, three of them have not been swung upon, and Nissan will track it. Glove side fastball from Malone has been outstanding tonight, and he hits the spot once again, a perfect pitch, a lot like he struck out Anthony Rendon Number in the 40, first inning with a perfectly Wilson placed Ramos. fastball. So is that one. Trying to show his old team what they're missing. I was going to say, this does not look like an 0 3 pitcher with a 586 ERA. There's Wilson Ramos hot shot to short first time Lowry threw him out eighty one on the off speed ball one everybody asks us about the players, especially in interleague play, like what's this guy doing? What's that guy doing? And when they come to Wilson Ramos, I always say the same thing. He's the best player in baseball that nobody knows about. And that's due to the injuries and what he's gone through the last three years. But I just feel like it's a matter of time before he's a household name in this game. Josh Donaldson takes care of that. And by the way, there's another bridge here. Right out at where the Pacific comes into San Francisco Bay. How about that view of the beautiful Golden Gate? That's Golden Gate. It's red. All right. Live, the 2014 postgame concert series lineup has been announced. This year's three postgame concert series will feature the Plain White Tees on June 5th, Austin Mahoney on July 19th, and Martina McBride on August 16th. Don't miss out seeing these great performances for free. Get your tickets today. Visit nationals.com slash Nats Live or call the number on your screen. Those dudes are going. A couple right there. Absolutely. I see red people even in Oakland. It's great. Amongst all the green and gold, I like it. Here's Yoannis Cespedes. Big curveball by Doug Fister. Bounced out to Danny Espinosa, ending bottom of the first. Busted bat. And that is a fair ball over the head of Rendon. Cespedes, I don't know. Must have taken him a long time to get out of the box. He didn't even come close to having a chance at second base. A lot of times the hitter, you're looking at the baseball to see if it's going to be caught or fall. And I think that might have been what Cespedes did right there. But it takes a strong man to hit the ball where Cespedes does right here, right off his knuckles. And he throws it over Anthony Rendon's head. That's not easy when you hit the ball where he hit it. Usually that ball barely makes it to the third baseman. Strong man hit it. It's over Rendon's head. And the bat almost went farther than the baseball. Josh Reddick, the right fielder, next. If 
five player deal from Boston brought him here. Here's uh, Billy Bean, the master at cherry picking players from other organizations, bringing them out here with his manager, Bob Melvin, who I think is one of the really underrated managers in all of baseball. Putting guys together who play together well. Denard Span can't get to it. And on a good read by Cespedes, he gets to third base, running all the way. First and third, nobody out. Yeah, he read that like there was two outs. And you saw the speed of Cespedes coming around second, but another elevated pitch by Fister. When Fister's locked in, that ball that Cespedes hits, a ground ball to third and a broken bat, because it's down in the zone. Even though it was a good pitch in, it was elevated. This, to Reddick, not really elevated, but high enough for him to elevate it. And now the A's are in business with the first and third no out situation. In the fourth. And Derek Norris, who's red hot coming up. Last time up, fouled off a couple pitches, single cleanly to right. Strikeout situation for Fister. I don't think he wants to trade a double play for a run right here. Not the way Tommy Malone's pitching right now. You got to reach back and find a way to strike Derek Norris out. Got inside on him there with 89. And now an 0 2 count. He's about to hit the Nats 6 to 1. And if you're thinking about a stolen base with Reddick, when the A's go, they make it. They're 23 for 26 on the year. That's an 88.5 stolen base percentage. That's tops in the majors. And Fister staying inside of the right-handed batter. He just did get a piece of that one. So from 377 to 386. And he has a four game hitting streak now, five for his last 10. And that is a wild pitch, and it's 3 nothing. Total overthrow by Doug Fister there, and Wilson Ramos had little chance. Well, he didn't go to his knees and block it. I don't know if it's because he can't get his glove over due to the surgery he had, but watch him try to trap this ball instead of go to his knees and block it with his chest protector. Especially with the runner on third base. We've seen Wilson Ramos go to two knees right there, get in front and keep it in front. And I don't know if he's having trouble turning his glove over. He told me that that would be the biggest test for him, not hitting, but moving his glove with that handmade surgery coming off it. He's definitely not 100% yet. And you see the guard right there. And I don't know if he wanted that glove the other way and have a chance that that ball hit him on the palm of his hand where he had the surgery. And a chopper could be trouble. Rendon with a bare hand and a great play for the first out. Over to third goes Reddick. Anthony Rendon coming up big for his pitcher there. Oh, nice job by Derek Norris at moving the runner with nobody out to third and the way he's going you're thinking this is a base hit all the way but Anthony Rendon says not so fast with the bare hand in the bullet throw across the diamond tough to get a grip when you grab it barehanded like that good stretch by Franzen Norris trip going across the base but he got the job done nice play by Rendon number eight hitter Eric Sogard wide to center first time Well, he's with the infield in. You have to right now. And as he scored around, a breaking ball was chasing his back foot. Pretty good pick by Ramos. Well, there he is getting his glove around, and there he is blocking it. So watch Ramos on this one versus the last one. Curveball in the dirt from Fister. He got the glove over, got in front of it. The difference was, I think the last one was a fastball. And curveball's a little easier to block. They're coming slower. Got more time to think about it and react. It's 
Sogard 0 for 1 now hitting 200. 266 here last year. In his first full big league season when he got 368 at bats. When Doug Fister's right, and he will be right, this pitch will be down the zone, but this is where Doug has been all night, and that's why he's gotten hurt. Belt high fastball, maybe a little bit higher than belt high. And when you just think of him in the past, even the short time we saw him in spring training, that two seamer acts like a split figure sometimes. It's got that much sink to it. Tonight it doesn't. And that pitch is up as well. I know it's his first time back at Pete. Any concern at all that he's topping out at 88 89 on the fastball. No that's what his fastball average all last year 88 miles an hour. That's where he sits. He can get up to 90 91 occasional 92. But he's more about movement and being down in the zone with tremendous late sink that I'm just not seeing tonight. It goes back to what we talked about in the first. Big curveball base hit but it was up. And the A's lead for nothing. This is what they do. They make contact. They put the ball in play. And now they have three singles around the wild pitch to double their lead. Well, you almost had to get a knock at an RBI on Nerd Night when everybody's wearing your glasses, don't you? Eric Sogard joined the party right here. Another pitch up, curveball from Fister this time. And Sogard just simply drops the barrel on it, lines it to right to make this a 4 nothing game. We talked about it about a week ago that the Nats are going to play the best team they've seen all year when they go to Oakland. And this is a team that's 210 and 149. That's the best record in the major since 2012. 210 and 149. That's a 585 winning percentage. Nobody better. Atlanta second, Detroit third, the Nats fourth. And a very steady hand at the wheel of Doug Melvin, who's in his fourth year here. Bob Melvin, pardon me. Doug Melvin, the GM in Milwaukee. He won a division in Arizona. He's won the West two consecutive years here with 94 and 96 wins. And, and really, up here, you look at their roster. Name one superstar on this team. Cespedes may be that potential. And lost it while they're getting ready for the dance. Josh Donaldson. But yeah, to your point, yeah. I mean, they don't have, that's the way Billy Bean does it. He platoons, he pieces together two guys at one position to get the most out of that position. He platoons at first base right now, he platoons at second base, platoons at catcher. And that's the way small market teams do it. And the whole money ball thing absolutely works over 162 game schedule. It's proven. It's a fact. That was his bench coach alongside Chip Hale. Playoffs? Not been a part of it? Not so much. And last year, the A's lost the division series to the Tigers in five games. They led two to one in that series. And that is a strike on the outer edge. And Craig Gentry can only walk away. Fister, perfect location. Second out, and that's his first strikeout tonight. Well, like I said, perfect location right here. And it looked like because of the sequence that Gentry was looking in, kind of watch his body kind of not be into it right there, leaning toward his own dugout, and he gets to the outside corner with the last pitch. Top of the order now, John Jaso. Big curveball drops in. To the left handed batter who hit one a mile last time over the 388 mark, which is 15 feet off the ground in deep right center. 82 on the off speed blocked by Ramos, who's had a busy inning. Not the way Doug Fister dreamed tonight up when he sat around for a month waiting for this start, but. I know Nats fans probably don't want to hear this, but the fact that he's in the rotation and he comes out of this okay is the only thing I'm really caring about tonight. Yeah, you want to win. You want to come out for a shutout, your first start with a new team. You want to impress your new teammates and your new fan base, all that stuff, and I'm sure that is going through Doug's mind tonight. But if he comes out of this healthy and you have your fourth starter for the rest of the year, it's really all that matters about tonight for me. Yeah, and he'll go through that thing tomorrow morning, pitchers go through. When they wake up, 
And the first thing is, okay, how does my arm feel? Yeah. How do I feel? Is it tight? Is it sore? Or his lat, his right lat, and that's yeah. the injury that he's recovering from or recovered from. And had so many pitchers tell me the, the hardest thing is waking up the next morning and seeing how you feel. It's hardest thing for a lot of people. <laughs> and that's a big curveball. That's a hard thing for a lot of batters. But the A's pick up two more runs on three hits. Time for the bats to get busy. Middle of the ball game here in Oakland. See him in Oakland. Four nothing. Nats are behind for the achiever in UPNC Bank with our minor league report. Haven't checked in lately on Austin Voth, 21 year old right hander, 6'2, 210. He's a Husky out of the University of Washington, pitching for Hagerstown, fifth rounder just last year. So the record not great, but hey, one and two with an ERA like that, they just need to get him a few hits. Opponents only hitting 223 against him and a three to one strikeout to walk. Ratio. I need to call him up because he's so ready. Austin Voth. Here's Ian Desmond struck out looking first time. Pops it up. A ton of room over there. And that's the first baseman, Brandon Moss. We've already seen two foul balls tonight by Rendon and Desmond that might or might not have been playable elsewhere. Tommy Malone is making it look easy right now. He's retired eight in a row right. and 11 of the last 12. And that's with one base hit, a double by Scott Hairston in the second. Somebody else came close to immortality tonight. Yeah, I think you Darvish was close, right? Big Poppy got him in the ninth inning. Well, that's according to a text from my son, so I really wouldn't <laughs> rely on that a whole lot. The Santangelo Network <laughs> reporting tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, it's good to see him on the off day yesterday. I got to go home, see the kids, playoff soccer game. By the awesome. way, FP Jr. was right, eight and two thirds, one hit for Darvish. And that was at Texas tonight. We'll see the Rangers in interleague play this year. Never been to Arlington, but they're coming back to D.C. Tommy Malone. Against the only man with a hit, Hairston. Who was with Oakland for a little while, Scott was. Pulled the string on him. Made that look like a regular fastball. 60 games for Scott here in 09. He hit 236 with 35 RBIs. Well, that fastball at 86 on the inner half is playing way harder than it looks. Sure is. Guys are late, huh? Yeah, having trouble getting to it. 
Even Scott Harris, student, who at times hits with alligator arms, I mean, he can really get to that inside pitch having trouble, even though he got a double. Going in there again. See that? They're, they're just not getting to the sneaky 86, 87 that Malone's featuring late. One out top of the fifth inning. And he goes with the breaking ball, and Hurston able to get rid of that as well. And it goes against everything you're taught as a hitter. And I think I've said this on the air before. Joe Kerrigan told me against a guy like Al Leiter who had a nasty cutter from the left side, proud the plate. And I said, are you kidding me? Crowd the plate off a 94 cutting in on me? He said, yeah, it takes the window away that the lefty has to throw the cutter. Now you're on top of the plate, and he gets nervous that he's going to hit you with it. So what he invariably does is leave it out over the plate. I did it, and it worked. I think it went 0 for 3 instead of 0 for 4. <laughs> but it makes sense, right? You, you wouldn't think of it back off the plate. The guy's got to cut fastball. It's going to come in on you all night. Give yourself some room to hit. The opposite, in fact, is true. Get right on the plate, and now he doesn't feel as comfortable throwing it in there because there's no room. Quite a battle here. So Tommy Malone, who threw only 54 pitches in four innings, has to throw 10 so far to one hitter. Hairston, top five. Danny Espinosa on deck here. And Hairston will get jammed and pop it up. Foul ground, Josh Donaldson. Two outs. As promised earlier in the game, here it is, AT&T fan photo. And I decided since we don't have names, I'm just going to make them up the rest of the year. That is Mary from Arlington, and she Great. is next to Teddy, Teddy and Abe. Teddy from D.C. Yep, that's Mary. They she still is. live on Pennsylvania Avenue, actually. I have no idea if that's Mary, but tonight she's Mary. Just a look at how big the foul ground is in this spacious better for football than baseball stadium. I mean look at that from the third base back to the dugout is 100 feet. And a bunt by Espinosa might have hit it too hard and Donaldson's able to throw him out. What a play by Josh Donaldson. Are you kidding me? A former catcher converted to third base as good as it gets at third right now. Bare hand play on the run right on the money. Gets Espinosa. Wow. Connection set to the bottom of the fifth inning. Four nothing A's. And John Jaso, his second home run, a solo shot to lead off the third. And watch the location of the pitch from Doug Fester. Belt high fastball, started it in, ran it back right down the middle. 
almost to the eye of the hurricane, and Jaso makes him pay with his second home run of the year. Just over the 388 sign in right center field. And he scored two more in the fourth to make this 4 0. Lowry, Donaldson, Moss, bottom of the fifth. That was Doug Fister's 72nd pitch of the night. Eighteen in the first, sixteen in the second, fourteen in the third, and then in that two run three hit fourth inning. Twenty three pitches. Well into his wind up before time was called. That's a fastball tonight from Fister eighty two percent. And a ball out to right, Worth able to grab that. Lowry 0 for 3, Josh Donaldson, Brandon Moss, the next two. With more on Doug Fister's return, here's Mass and Dan. Bob, Doug Fister's a very well rounded guy. He's three classes short of his college degree and still thinks he might become a teacher one day. His dad and his uncle both worked in law enforcement roles, and Fister thought about becoming a firefighter or a police officer growing up. He worked in construction a few off seasons in a row when he was in the minors and spent part of this off season remodeling his bathroom himself. We've all seen the most interesting man in the world commercials. Doug Fister might be the most interesting man on the national. He's a very well-rounded guy. Hmm. Well, his dad played college football at Fresno State. But Nats fans don't know is that he can hit. You see his batting practice with the rest of the starting pitchers. First baseman in college at Fresno State. Really handle the bat. You won't see it tonight, obviously. Four for 15 career with a couple of RBIs. Threw a lot of pitches last year with the Tigers while going 14 and 9. Backs up Rendon. Low throw. And Danny Espinosa is going to back up to make sure that runner doesn't go to third base. That'll be Anthony Rendon's fourth error of the year. Kind of see that coming with the sidearm throw, but that's what Rendon has done all year. This one he just gets underneath of it because he backs up. Tries to get the momentum going to first base, but because he was on his heels and really didn't have that forward momentum going through the baseball. That's what sinks this ball, and Kevin Franzen had none chance at that one, and Donaldson just keeps on rolling to second base. Brandon Moss next. One for two with an RBI single. And a curveball hit out the center. It's got Carey. Denard Span back there, and that ball is gone. And Oakland leads 6 0 on Brandon Moss, sixth of the year. Well, the second home run of the night off Doug Fister, and you see the location of the pitch. Moss, one of the strongest guys in the American League. That called up a couple of years ago in June and had 21 home runs to finish that year. And the red flag for me tonight, eight fly ball outs for Doug Fister. Two home runs, so ten balls in the air by the ace tonight. And I I think it's safe to say you won't see that the rest of the year from Fister that many fly balls when he's yeah. locked in the balls on the ground all the time. He's one of the toughest guys in baseball to elevate but tonight it's not the case and it's not been his night. Ross Detweiler up again. Ace have scored two unearned runs tonight because of a pitcher's error. Hit one by Rendon. Lost in 30 home runs here last year. Drove at 87. One of those kids out of that great amateur program in the state of Georgia. And a fly ball. This one floating with the right field corner. And Worth is going to watch it go out of here. Yoannis Cespedes with his seventh. And these guys are making a big ballpark play pretty small.
Well, you saw the strength right there of Giannis Cespedes. Opposite field home run, and once again, a belt tied fastball from Doug Fister. Cespedes makes him play seventh home run of the year. 21st RBI, and that's going to do it for Doug Fister. Matt Williams out to get his right hander, and there will be better days, folks, for Doug Fister. I can promise you that. He is done after four and a third. Detweiler coming in, and the route is on in Oakland. Ross Detweiler. Coming off a decent homestand when they took two out of three from the Dodgers. But they have been stopped by Tommy Malone and lit up by the Oakland offense tonight. Ross Detweiler takes over. One out fifth inning. Only one guy on the Oakland team has ever faced him, and that's Nick Punto, who's on the bench. Here's Josh Reddick. Fastball 93. Curveball 79. Change up 84 from Detweiler. And he has been searching to find it out of Nats bullpen. You see the 10 walks in 15 innings, too much. The lefty's hitting 316 against Devon, a guy that in the past has absolutely stifled left handed hitters. So, four to third, nine hits, seven runs, five earned. Two strikeouts, no walks, an error, a wild pitch. Three home runs. Yeah, we noted it right out of the gate. I thought Doug Fister was working fast. I thought he was over amped. You could tell by the, the play he made on the ground ball that he threw away. And it's natural and it's understandable. And everybody that's ever been in a big league uniform has been there and done that first outing with a new team, especially when you wait around a month. Be better next time. And that's 11 walks by Ross Detweiler in 15 and two thirds innings this year against 10 strikeouts. Got ahead, missed on four. Next up will be Derek Norris. Well, I don't know that Ross Detweiler loves being a reliever, but the only way you get from being a reliever to a starter again is by doing something as a reliever. And so far, Ross hasn't. It's that simple. There's no other way to sugarcoat it. If you want to get back in the rotation, you have to show your manager and your organization that you're that guy. Norris went for two base hit to right. On a high chopper, robbed of another hit. Desmond will throw in behind the runner for a 6-3 double play. So the walk erased immediately. Ball game into the sixth inning. And Kevin Franzen will lead off the Nats. Have a huge Mount Davis to climb tonight.
On the other side of the Bay Bridge tonight, it's not going well for the Nets. Seven nothing Oakland. Two unearned runs. Tommy Malone setting them down, averaging about 15 pitches per inning. MLB.premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers and watch every auto market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit nationals.com for details. Is that shot through like a volleyball net right there? <laughs> Badminton. Maybe that'll be the rally net or something. It's going to have to be a big rally. Here's Kevin Franzen. Struck out swinging first time up. Pop up. Easy play here. But it came twisting back on Brandon Moss. I mean, he had time to get over there, sprinted, got to where he thought the ball may be, and they could give him an error on that. Come on, Carp, you know better than that. The only easy play is the one that's already made. Felipe Alou taught you that 10 years ago. And especially with all the foul ball ground here. And the wind and the elements, and it must have took a bad hop right at the end. He was underneath it. Just misjudged it. And Kevin Franzen will take it. New life. No error posted. It's okay. Guys have a lot of room to cover here. Franzen high in the air to center for Craig Gentry. Top of the order, Span and Rendon, the next two. The box score. Only two entries. Two out walk worth in the first. Number two. Two, two out three. double. Hairston in the second. Tommy Malone has retired 11 in a row and 14 of the last 15. Dark span has popped to short and fly to right. One of the A's people was asking me today about the ball club, and they were asking about Jason Worth and Bryce Harper, Adam LaRoche, Rendon. I simplified things and not to put too much pressure on Denard, but I said Denard Span makes this club go offensively. If he gets on, they win. It's pretty simple. It changes the whole dynamic of the game when he's on two or three times in the game. And when he's not, it's just a different offense. You hate to put it on one guy, but that's the responsibility of a true leadoff hitter, and Denard loves that. You won't shy away from that at all, right? Yeah. Tommy Malone has had to pitch off the stretch for two hitters today. Get on base with your leadoff guy. You've got him on the stretch. He's worried about throwing over. Everybody in the infield gets a little itchy. Easy take there. The count's two and two. Malone made 26 starts last year. Not at all a strikeout guy. But this is one of those nights when he's been very fine at hitting his spots. Down on the last two pitches, and the count goes three and two. Second, the second inning, Nissan will show how the Nats get a runner. Well, I'll tell you what, if Tommy Malone just threw a 3 2 change up to the Denard Span up by seven runs, he deserves a walk because with Every a seven six. run cushion, Anthony you have to challenge down. guys. And the fact that he threw Span a change up at 81 miles an hour right there, up by seven, is a head scratcher to say the least. Next up, Anthony Rendon with one out. Yeah, good call. Cavernous ballpark. And an Oakland Raiders type lead. Rendona has struck out looking and fouled out to first. And 
this will be a fly ball to center for Gentry. You can't really look back through the scorebook tonight and see more than one out or so that's been hard hit. Espinosa's to center field. I have an exclamation point. Number 28, Jason Ward. And that's it. Here's Worth, 0 for 1 with a walk. to the outside corner. It just seems like if Nats hitters are looking in, he throws it away. If they're looking away, he throws it in. If they're looking soft, he throws it hard and vice versa. Just been keeping them off balance, moving the fastball around nice, throwing the change up in hitters counts. And this is a foul ball that will get out of play. You sure? Yeah, it's in the upper deck everywhere else. <laughs> And about six rows deep here. By the way, maybe a few kudos as well to Derek Norris, the way he's working with his left hander today. I'll tell you what, the one thing the foul ball space does create here, and I've seen it a million times, most probably with the old third baseman wants to play with here, Eric Chavez, is the great plays guys make in foul territory, sliding in the dugouts. It makes for some exciting pop up plays close to the tarp and close to the dugout. And the curve ball. Jason skips away from it. One ball, two strikes. But the only thing I can ever see in this ballpark is Derek Jeter flipping to Jorge Posada. And I'm sorry, but that's all I can see. Can't blame you for that. Yeah. Kept you guys out of a World Series, right? Yeah. Worth will hook this one. Left field corner over to cover it. Plenty of time. Johannes Cespedes. And the Nats are gone in the top of the sixth and still only have one hit by the Bay tonight. The telecast is presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. I'll give you something to stay up late for. Brother. Look what the president started. Even on the West Coast. Raleigh Fingers on the left, Dennis Eckersley in the middle, and Ricky Henderson on the right. Two pitchers racing Ricky Henderson? Are you kidding me? No, so Do they ever win a race? Well, it'll be next inning. Stay up and we'll bring it to you live. 
If I was Dennis Eckersley, I would not be real happy about that caricature. <laughs> Some good mustaches out there. Yeah. I have the greatest sunglasses ever, says the guy on the right. The greatest of all time. Yeah. 130 stolen bases in 1982. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, shattering Luke Rock's mark of, I think, 118. It's just ridiculous. It's almost. That's 30 games an entire year without stealing a base. I mean, I used to come to those games in the early 80s and watch Ricky, and we would root for him to get on base. And when he got on base, this whole place would get on their feet. I mean, it got to that point to where when he reached first, everybody would stand and cheer. He would go, the place would go nuts. He'd steal second, and then they'd stay on their feet for him to steal third. That was when he was number 35 back in the early days before he turned into number 24. And a ball hit out to left by Eric Sogard. It'll back up Scott Hairston. And for the second time in a row out in left field, he'll drop what appears to be a routine fly ball. Scott had that happen to him against the Dodgers on Tuesday night. We got there are highlights here. I don't know if he lost it at the last no, second. No, he didn't lose that at all. His head just moved when he rotated across and squared up to the baseball. He actually put the glove right in front of his face and probably lost sight of it. Tell you what, that can't happen at this level. And if you're Matt Williams, you're going to start to wonder whether you can put Scott in left field just to be, you know, as frank as you can. Those are plays at the highest level that have to be made. Three errors by the Nets tonight. It's the big leagues. So Sogard gets to second base on that. Great Gentry has popped up and struck out. And Rush Detweiler hits it. And then the ball got redirected and hit Wilson Ramos, who's walking it off. You get him in the hand. That's the only place you worry about with Wilson yeah. right now. If they're redirected into that, that part that's hanging out of the glove, and that's the one part of the glove that Wilson's worried about. If it gets him, see how he turned his, yeah. I couldn't tell right there. I thought it got him above the right shoe. But actually. he was shaking his hand, so maybe it went glove to shoe. Yeah, I hope not. Two on, nobody out. John Jaso, the hitter. And a breaking ball misses away by Ross Dedwell. Fastball to the outside edge. Gets out there again for a strike. Counts even 2-2. Two, two. And a curveball hit to left. Hairston grabs it and a quick throw in the second. Runners had gone halfway. And that's the first out. Ace box score. Well, a lot going on for them tonight. Running the first RBI by Brandon Moss. Home run by Jaso, the DH, who's leading off in the third. Two in the fourth inning. And then the two home run inning, producing three more runs in the fifth by Moss and Cespedes. Ball down, good location. 
haven't seen that 95 96 from Ross yet this year. He's been 90 to 93. Jed Lowry, fly ball to each outfielder tonight, 0 for 3. That while they got a double play on infield line drive last inning, and a chance at one right here on a 6 4 3, and a good dig by Franzen on the tail end. So the opening error by Hairston doesn't hurt, and Ross Detweiler gets the Nance. Five outs here, ball game into the seventh. Hall of Fame race. Here it is, folks. Look what the president started, for goodness sakes. Ricky Henderson on the right. Raleigh Fingers in the middle. Dennis Eckersley on the left. It's the Hall of Fame race. And here they come. Ricky's won 10. Raleigh Fingers has run 10. Eck, I don't know how he's won four, but he has. Doesn't know how to close a race. Yeah. He knows how to close a ball game, but not a race. And this is painfully slow, and we're sorry we're showing it to you, but it was my idea, so blame me. That was not Exmo. Here comes Ricky Henderson, and he almost had the win. Little known fact, Ricky Henderson with that huge head of his right there in 1982, and he stole 130 bases, simply had to fall towards second base, and he was safe. Eckersley's going to go feel shame. You come in third, got to walk home. Yes. Take your big head, Dennis, and go home. Yeah, get that on Bart. They won't be able to get him through the tunnel under the bay. Take your huge heat and cry on your huge pillow. Zach Walters will step up and line one deep to left and out toward the gap as he hits for LaRoche. Yoannis Cespedes takes care of that. Seventh inning underway. You pinch hit for a DH. And you don't want your valuable first baseman running around the bases for the rest of the night that are you just so in awe of that race you just saw that you just make a move to make a move Zach Walters first pitch swinging here's Wilson Ramos 83 pitches 52 strikes for Tommy Malone and he has retired 14 of the last 16 Nationals hitters. Off speed, he's got Ramos reaching. I take a minute for Wilson Ramos to get blocked back in. Just 10 
penalizes him. Two outs. Folks, you can bring your group gathering to Nationals Park this season. The bigger your group, the bigger your discount. Check out national.com slash groups for more information on all group theme nights, as well as additional group experiences and benefits. Call 202-675-NATS. Bring everybody. That changeup's been good to right-handers. Ian Desmond 0 for 2. Strike out, foul out to first. And a breaking ball stays outside. Fastball's in, change ups away. Earlier tonight in the division, Phillies went extra innings to win 3 2 at New York. Braves went extra innings to win 3 2 at home over the Cubs. And the Marlins, well, they're on the road again, and they're trailing 7 0 in San Diego. They need to find a way to pack that thing on left center field and take it on the road with them. Wow. And if they can do that, they have a chance. Two and one to Ian Desmond. Big gap in left center. And that fastball well outside. Love to see Ian right here in a 3 1 count. Just take a nice smooth swing. I try to swing 110%. I feel like at times he's been over swinging this year. Just get a good pitch and smooth it out there. Got enough pop to, to still leave the yard with about an 80% swing. It's good at bat. Yeah, take the walk. Third walk by Malone tonight, who's still only given up one hit. Number seven, Grant Harrison. 90 pitches with two outs in the seventh inning. Tommy Malone's high on the year, 103 at Houston, when he went a season long six and two thirds. So he's right at that level of outs now, trying to make it through seven complete innings for the first time. Hairston with a double and a foul out to third. Well, the Orioles won earlier tonight, so the entire Masson family of networks with us. Dan F.B. Bob from the O.Co. Coliseum in Oakland. And Ricky, we're all here. Chopper and that got Hurston on the foot that's why he's not running foul ball Ian Desmond still playing hard down seven nothing yeah going in hard to second base he didn't know he's not taking a chance I like it. that's a great example of don't umpire kids if you're still up at midnight a you should go to bed but B if you're still here even though that was hit off Scott Harrison's foot and maybe even Ian saw it don't be the umpire play the play out fully so down seven to nothing look at Ian Desmond going hard into second base. That's how you play the game, no matter what the score is. Hello. And a little spinner to the right side. That ball was just going sideways as it made its way to Sogard. Couldn't get anything on the throw. And Scott Hairston's two for three tonight. Little cue shot. Scott Hairston will take it. And Ross Detweiler picked up Harrison for his miscue Eddie, last Eddie, inning, and nobody Eddie, felt Eddie, worse Eddie. than Scott. And now he gets a base hit. You see Sogard with the big flip. Harrison hustling down there, and Harrison still playing hard down seven to nothing. And you got to like that. Two on, two out. First time the Nationals have had two base runners tonight. I'll tell you what, based on. Personal experience when you're down seven to nothing, that's when you play even harder because your manager doesn't have to manage. So, what does he do? He watches every move you make. He's looking for things he normally doesn't have time to look for, meaning, how's this guy reacting right now down to seven? Is he going hard to first base? Is he sliding hard into second? 
Matt Williams has no plays to put on. His team's down by seven runs. He doesn't have any real strategy here other than maybe getting a LaRoche off his feet and saving him for tomorrow. So what do you do? You look at everything. And as a player, that's when you play your hardest. Espinoza 0 for 2. Fly ball to center. Round ball to third that was hard hit. And that's a strike. They just brought up Joe Savory. Phillies let him go. Ace picked him up on the waivers. Take strike three. Tommy Malone, six strikeouts tonight, and it's our Hyundai seventh inning stretch. Somebody heading out for some late night activities here in Oakland. Right now, it's getting very late for the Nats. Virginia through May 11th. There are plenty of promotions at the Fitz, including Anthony Rendon poster, fireworks. Kids run the bases free with animals chasing them, I think, during the game. Come down and see the future Washington Nationals all summer long. Go to PotomacNationals.com or call the number right there. That number, call it now. They're awake, I promise. He'd be there if he could, but he's seeing a major league game tonight. Had a dude. Fastball up and in. Bottom of the seventh underway. His parents, they hit her, Josh Donaldson. His parents are very confused, but he's got it right. I bet you he's a Bryce Harper fan. Just a guess. Yeah. Who isn't? Bryce got me chomping at the bit right now, doesn't he? Guy that just lives for the game, loves playing baseball, sitting there watching. Got to be going nuts. That's a fastball that catches the inside edge. The count two and two on Donaldson, who has scored two runs tonight. One for three, reaching on an infield single. Going to third on an error by Fister. And then reaching on a Rendon error in the fifth inning. That's a pretty nasty curveball by Ross Detweiler. And a little blue butt into right field. Danny Espinosa drops it. They've got a play on the runner. Worth double and triple pumps, and then the runner gets back. Jason could have picked him off by throwing behind him. Maybe didn't want to throw behind him. Then he waited too long. He had him dead to rights if he let go of it, but I think he was worried about Donaldson going to second base on the throw. Espinoza out. 
And they got to score that hit all the way. Espinosa went a long way for that. That would have been a great play if he made it. And you see Worth with the double triple pump and that allows Donaldson to get back into first and that play right there pretty much sums up the whole night for the Nationals. It has not been pretty. And it is a hit. Brandon Moss next two for three big RBI guy tonight with three. Including a straightaway center field home run last time up. This guy hears it out. As mentioned, breakthrough season last year at the age of 29 when he hit 30 homers and drove in 87. That's a good heater. He was not looking for that and he walks away quickly. So it's $37 more to the Children's Inn at the National Institutes of Health, thanks to a Deadweiler strikeout. And that's because of the great community involvement of our D.C. area Toyota dealers helping children and their families. Losses first strikeout. Next up, Yoannis Cespedes. He's two for three. Two for three with a home run to right field. <laughs> I mean, in this ballpark, it seems like the ball's been carrying a little bit better here tonight than normal. But going the other way, straight down the right field line, or straight away right field, I should say. Mm -hmm. That ball was up and he had a pitch. He was pumping. This guy is a powder kick. They list him at 5'10, but he's 2'10 in terms of weight, and he can generate some power. See the short compact swing to throw the bat. He had 381 in the division series last year. In his first year in the big leagues, in 12, he hit 316. So he has 14 postseason hits and a home run to his credit already. Aaron Barrett works for the Nats. Got him moving the feet and jumping back. Well, I'll tell you why Wilson Ramos held that. Because Tommy Malone has been making a living in there tonight, and Wilson knows that. He thought that was a strike. Small thing, but just trying to explain why he held it there. And another ball the other way, way up. I thought Puig was about Cespedes' size, just the last home stand, until I stood next to Puig. In the Dodgers clubhouse, and he seemed every bit of six four to me. Yeah, he's and huge. Just because he's wide, you think that yeah, CL Puig is the same size as Cespedes? He's not. He's a house. And I think it's just because he's so wide. Yeah. When I was looking at Puig the other night, he reminded me of two other players I've seen in a big league uniform. One was Brian Jordan, who played football at the University of Richmond. Good call. Went on to the Atlanta Falcons. Had some good years in the big leagues. And then somebody else reminded me. Bo Jackson was like that. So suddenly, Detwater blowing the ball by Cespedes as well as Moss. Two outs, but you just don't see specimens like that in a baseball uniform as a rule. No. I like the Bo Jackson comparison. It fits definitely. And, and the talent level, too. Inside the numbers with Jeep. The Rockies' offense is absolutely ridiculous this year. The athletics coming into this evening. A little more of an offense pitching combination ball club. I mean, the Rockies just outslug everybody they play. And some nights their pitching staff doesn't allow them to do that. But Bob Melvin's staff usually allows you to win a ball game if you take care of your business offensively. I'm telling you, that guy is a good manager. I was surprised when Arizona let him go. Former teammate of Matt Williams. Mm -hmm. Matt Williams bench coach when Matty played in Arizona. That's right. And then Matt Williams also teammates early in his career with Chili Davis, the hitting coach for the A's. So there's all kinds of 
the Giants ties around here tonight with the skipper and his former teammates. There's Chili Davis hitting coach for the Oakland Athletics. One of the best switch hitters for power ever. 350 home runs. Her ball. That one is suddenly throwing the ball really well. No swing. Said Mark Ripperger down to third base. Doing a nice job of staying through the fastball tonight. Those are some pork chops right there. Brady Anderson would be proud of those, but I think it goes into his beard, doesn't it? I'll let you decide. Yeah. That's going to drop in front of Hairston in left field. Two hit night. Three times on base for Josh Reddick. Deadweller knows he made a good pitch, little smile on the mound right there, and Reddick does a nice job of staying inside of it, fighting it off and getting a second knock. There are only a few days left to win a meet and greet with that guy, former Oakland Athletic, Gio Gonzalez, had a nice time getting back at the ballpark, seeing old friends today. Just visit Facebook.com slash Masson Nationals and click on Enter Sweepstakes for your chance to win a meet and greet with Gio Gonzalez, courtesy of the mid Atlantic Sports Network. Inside to Derek Norris. I know one of the first guys to see Gio out here at the ballpark today was Ray Fossey, outstanding catcher. The infamous collision with Pete Rose in the All Star game pretty much ended his career, and an outstanding broadcaster out here for a couple of decades. Derek Norris, the former Nationals draftee. Perfect pitch down around the knees on the inside edge. Right now, don't know how the rest of this inning is going to go, but both hits have been bloops. Like in what we see from Ross Dunwell. It's the best he's thrown the ball in a while. I feel like Derek could change his first name to Bjorn and be a Viking. Gunner, maybe? Well, there was Eric the Red. He could be Derek the Green. Yeah. Rendon can't get to it. Around third is Donaldson. Throw home late. And the Athletics lead 8 0. Well, a couple of bloops and a top spin ground ball get through. These guys put the ball in play. That's another hitter with two base hits tonight. And Norris continues his amazing hitting of over 380. Well, the former Nats are showing the current Nats what they're missing. Tommy Malone having a big night on the mound. Derek Norris having a big night at the plate. Second hit for Norris. RBI to boot. And Eric the Red with a knock. I'll tell you what. It's not so much you're trying to show your team what they're missing. Your focus goes to another level when you're playing your old team and when you got traded away. And that's definitely on display here tonight for those two guys. Detweiler taking over now. Barrett.
Watson. Brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. A little rosin for you right there on some prime time. Except for a couple of sections right behind home plate, they tarp off the upper deck here, giving them a capacity of 35,067 for baseball. Aaron Barrett will take over. He'll inherit two runners here. A run home in the seventh with Eric Sogard getting his first look at the fastball slider combination. And the opponent's hitting 189 off the bear. Fastball averaging 93.4 miles an hour, slider 84. Pretty interesting that Matt Williams came out and got his lefty with Sogard in. Maybe a message. I don't know. I, I thought Ross threw the ball better tonight than we've seen recently. As mentioned, two bloops and a ground ball this inning, but pitching coaches and managers will tell you bloops usually come on pitches that are up. So two pitches, Barrett's out of the inning. A run on three hits. It's all athletics tonight. It'll be a long swim home. Tomorrow night, and Tanner Roark will be the guy getting it going for the Nats. Two and one. Right hander Zero hitting 239 against him. And then there's this gentleman named Sonny Gray. Who is he? Well, right now, he's nine and four in 17 big league starts. So he and Roark kind of have that winning early in their career thing in common. Sonny, four and one with a 191 ERA. 830, Johnny and Ray in the studio. Nats extra on Masson two. And there's Tanner. Gets to pitch a little earlier in the evening tomorrow when it might be a little tougher for the hitters to see the ball. Well, I'll tell you what, Sonny Gray is the A's best pitcher. He's their ace, and he reminds me of a 24 year old Tim Hudson. Wow. Same delivery, good fastball, nasty 12 6 curveball. And a guy with a bright future, and when you watch tomorrow night, he will remind you of Tim Hudson at that age. Looks like Tim Hudson at 16. <laughs> Here we go to the eighth. Franzen fouls it off to the right side. Kevin 0 for two tonight. Strikeout fly ball. Tommy Malone approaching 100 pitches. And this is his longest outing of the year. He has two major league complete games to his credit. Don't know if he'll make it that far tonight. And this one handled by Eric Sogard for the first out. A's have had some issues in closing ball games this year. They have three guys with saves, and Jim Johnson struggled with only two. Yesterday, a lot of hubbub made about the quotes from Kevin Franzen, talking about how he thought Anthony Rendon was the best young player on the Nationals. And quite frankly, it's all he was doing is voicing his opinion. 
And I don't think there was anything wrong with it. He wasn't trying to offend anybody else. He just said what he thought about Anthony Rendon at third base and what he's meant to the ball club. And the rest of the world just kind of took off and ran with it. And Anthony Rendon, a guy who likes to stay under the radar. I don't know if he was pumped about it, but you know, Kevin's a guy that's always been pretty frank with his answers with the media. When asked who he was impressed with most, he said Anthony Rendon. And as far as young players go, he thought he was the best young player on the Nats. Caused a lot of stir in the world of baseball, especially the media world. And the one thing I will say is that. In my experiences, baseball players are very, very perceptive. They don't miss too many things. And I don't think anybody really had a problem with what Kevin said. He wasn't meaning to insult anybody else. He was just pumping up a guy that he's basically really excited to be playing with right now and fortunate to be watching on a daily basis. the guys who interviewed him in a sense wouldn't be doing their jobs had they not asked him the follow up question which was about Bryce Harper and then it kind of all got out from there. But you know I, I hope we never get to a point in this game or in this country where we can't express an opinion anymore and everybody goes crazy. I mean as long as you're not offending people. Well the one I mean we're, we're talking you know guys are talking baseball. They're not robots that be their people with opinions. Well, the one thing I think Kevin learned in all of it is the mania that follows Bryce Harper, where if you even say something to pump up another teammate, it can blow out of proportion. And you know, my experience is the only guy I ever played with like that was Barry Bonds, to where you had to be careful what you said, and it could always blow up. And I think we've all learned that the same goes for Bryce. Whenever you say anything close to controversial, and it includes Bryce, it's going to have legs. Rendon goes up pumping. Two outs here in the eighth. He said their bullpen ready if needed, but Tommy Malone showing no signs of weakening. It'll be well over 100 pitches. Don't know if they'll bring him out for the ninth. But I think we all know that in baseball, complete games aren't important anymore. They're nice when they happen. Crowd of the feet for Tommy Malone, who's been absolutely fantastic here against his old ball club. And don't reaching. That had a funny sound to it. He just busted his bat. Crowd of 20,159. This place will be nuts tomorrow night because they have fireworks after the game. So they'll have 35,000 or so. I don't know if it's enough to make them take off the tarp on a few sections upstairs, but Tanner Roark will have a raucous night on which to pitch here tomorrow. This place can get loud. Usually below sea level, things are very quiet, but not here. Hasn't worn many over collars tonight or this year. And that's going to be a rock job at third base and a pick on the other end by Brandon Moss. This does not look like the third worst defensive team in the American League tonight.
Houston. A converted catcher playing third base, and he has been nothing but gold over there for the A's. Made a couple of good plays tonight so far. This one just robbing Anthony Rendon. Slide move, getting to his feet. Reminds me of Eric Chavez used to make that play for the A's as good as anybody. The sliding play. Nice pick on the back end by Brandon Moss, but caught up with Josh today before the game. He was a catcher in double A. And he had 26 pass balls, and he blamed the scorekeeper. He said the balls were hidden in the dirt. The scorekeeper in double A had no clue. So they kept calling wild pitches pass balls. So all of a sudden, he got the label as a guy who couldn't catch because of a scorekeeper in double A. His first game in the big leagues, guess who he caught? Some guy named Gio Gonzalez, who struck out 10 with Josh Donaldson as the catcher. And they will meet on Sunday. How about that? That's a great story. So no pass balls that night with you? Not that we know of? No. An official score can ruin a catcher's career in minor league baseball. And That's it, really something. And he hit a game-winning home run in that game. Very nice. I, I sought him out today because he's one of my favorite players. I, I love the way he approaches the game. He plays with his hair on fire. He gets no recognition, no love at all because he plays on the West Coast. But... One of the best players in baseball that not a lot of people on the East Coast know about, Josh Donaldson. Well, he keeps this going. He's going to be on the All-Star team. He should be. He should have been last year. Drove in 93 runs. Craig Gentry, the center fielder, 0 for 2, hit by a pitch. I mean, just looking at Donaldson. By the way, that's barely out of play. Pretty good hustle by Kevin Franzen right there. Down by eight runs. I just watched him pop up and bust it around first base full speed. And watch this effort. By Kevin Franzen down eight to nothing, giving it a good run over there on a ball about three rows back. One of those things you mentioned a manager is looking at in yeah. a game like this. You're on the spotlight. There's nothing else to do. It's when you play harder. But getting back to Donaldson the way he looks, I'm surprised he didn't kill the scorekeeper <laughs> after about 14 fastballs. You know, that's not like on a minor league per diem. You can just call a guy up and take him out to lunch. Yeah. Explain a few things to him. Excuse me, sir. When the ball hits the dirt, it's called a wild pitch. Mm -hmm. If I miss the ball, it's a pass ball. Now, would you like another whopper? But what he should do is really find that guy and thank him for making a gold, making him a gold glove quality third baseman. How about that? That's a strike on a delayed call by Gary Cedarstrom. John Jason one for four with that long home run back in the third. Tommy Malone, by the way, is at 108 pitches. The Oakland bullpen has gone quiet. Oh, it's his game. He's going for a shutout. Kidding me? Those don't grow on trees. One and one. That is a nasty slider at 84. When you start your swing, it's gone later. Nissan will show that. Right there, I see fastball right there. I know it's a slider and it's too late. And I missed it by a foot. Goes in there again and Mr. Rumbles makes a fantastic block. Keep that big man healthy. Check in in about three months and you'll see some numbers. Three in a row. Three and two with one out, a runner aboard. Kevin Franzen, eight run game playing behind that runner, and there's a foul off to the left.
come the foul balls. I honestly think you should keep track of foul balls as a staff in the major leagues. For the only reason it being a pitch count killer. I mean, you're going to keep track of pitches. You're going to take guys out at 100 pitches. I think foul balls are just as important to keep track of as anything else. Barrett walks two in a row. Folks, remember our, our Washington, D.C. Lexus Steelers are donating 250 bucks to the Children's National Medical Center for every tater a Nats player hits this season. It's for a wonderful cause. Keep them coming. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. This kid has no idea what town he's in right now. He is a Washington athletic. Oh and has God. multiple personalities, brother. Got a chance to get a ball from each team. If he plays it right. Jed Lowry takes one upstairs. Wilson Ramos is going to visit, and so is Steve McCaddy. He's Tyler Sogard, because he's got the clip goggles on, the Nats hat. Oh, the kid, the yeah. The A's hoodies. Drew Storen, if needed. Bit of, a bit of a talking to right here. Well, it's all about strikes. And you, you know, FP, what I like about what I'm seeing right there? Aaron Barrett looking at him right in the eye. A lot of pitchers will look down. They might nod a time or two. I like guys who look the pitching coach right in the eye and say, all right, let's do it. Yeah. So Drew Storm probably going to get some work in. He hasn't pitched since Monday against the Dodgers. Barrett up with everything. He does get that strike call. A's have not hit the Nats 12-2 in this 8-0 game. Yeah, it hasn't been pretty. And they're in the eighth inning in San Diego. The Marlins are down eight to one. Not a good job by the East in the West tonight. Should we go with jet lag? I don't know. We've been out here for two days already. They always say it catches up with you on the second day. I don't know. It's, I didn't have to hit Tommy Malone's pitches under my hands tonight. Definitely not the reason the Nats are down eight to nothing, but we talked about this last year when the Nats went to Los Angeles, and I think the first game in was the game Bryce ran into the wall. That you're used to being in bed by about the fifth inning. Maybe some guys the eighth or ninth. But <laughs> <laughs> Why did I know that was coming? But it's a hard adjustment when you come out to the West Coast, just for the simple fact that like a lot of fans still watching this game. It, it messes with your body clock. Like I said, not the excuse for tonight's performance. You can still win games when you're a little bit sleepy. But it's definitely an adjustment. I, I hated coming out to the West Coast when we were in Montreal. It just, and right when you get adjusted, you go back to the East Coast. So, well, and I remember in days past when you had the balanced schedule where you played everybody the same number of times. This is well before Interleague. You would always go the three West Coast cities if you were in the National League. And teams would be very happy. They'd be ecstatic if they could come back six and three or five and four. Because? Because of all of that. And then a lot of teams came home with their share of four and fives, three and sixes, and two and sevens. And in some cases, worse than that. Well, there's the time change you have to deal with, your body clock. And there's also the propensity to. Get the tourist mentality to where Felipe Lou would call us in the clubhouse and say, Look, this is a business trip. No SeaWorld today, no Disneyland today, no going on a, a, a tour of Alcatraz in the morning. Stay off your feet. Don't be a tourist. We're here to win ball games. And same goes for the crew in the truck. I told him. Yeah, good luck with that. Hairston camping under this one at the edge of the track. And runners will return two outs. 
So the Marlins are still playing. So are the Nats, but the Braves won tonight in extras over the Cubs. The Phillies caught the Mets by beating them 3-2 at City Field. It's going to be a dogfight all year. Marlins, by the way, as I mentioned earlier, 3-10 and ten on the road this year. Brandon Moss, two for four. RBI single, two run homer. Rolls over that one. Danny Espinosa to the outfield grass. A couple of hops to get squared up. And this one is going in to the ninth inning. Nice regroup by Aaron Barrett after the trip from Steve McCaddy. Nicely done. Yeah, the two walks right before that. This three game Oakland series certainly hasn't gone well for the Nets. Our freight rail works do up, and this is what the guys are doing on the road. Worth nearly 310, a couple of home runs. Zach Walters, heavy damage in Miami. Wilson Ramos, 0 for 6. Derek Barton takes over at first base. That's because Brandon Moss has moved to left field. And the new pitcher just called up today will be Fernando Rodriguez added to their bullpen. Leading off number 28. And some of the Nats have seen him before. First up, Jason Worth, who's 0 for 2 against his right hander. Ball one. Yeah, the fastball average is 94. They'll cut the fastball occasionally. Curveball 79. That's his out pitch and occasional changeup at 85. Rodriguez, full time with the Angels five years ago. Oakland, he did not pitch last year because he was injured. Tommy John surgery, March 27th, but the Nats had seen him in Houston a couple of times. In 2011 and 12. I Worthful think. sky one out of play. I'm just shocked that Bob Melvin didn't let Tommy Malone go for the finish line. He's got a two hit shutout going. That doesn't happen every day and I know he has 108 pitches. I also know it's early in the season. But last time out for Malone he only threw 77 pitches. And lasted four innings against the Red Sox. Two hit shutout he's going for. Looking at the big picture, and there's a reason why they've won so many games the last couple of years in Oakland. They absolutely know what they're doing. But outings like that and opportunities like that don't happen very often. You know, I don't know what he knows in the dugout. Maybe Malone got tight, maybe he got tired. But he still has a chance for a two hit shutout. And his career high is 118 pitches and they said Bob has forgotten more baseball than I'll ever know. And he knows his players, but 
I guess I'm just being selfish. I want to see if the guy could smell the finish line. Worth. This ball's got serious carry on it. And it'll be run down by Craig Gentry. Up against the wall in deep left center. Quite a play. Well, that's what I talked about when it gets dark here and the ball doesn't go anywhere. Jason Worth got this ball. Didn't have the greatest sound, but on Sunday that might be out of the ballpark or off the wall. Nice play by Gentry running it down. Showing a lot of range and a nice play. Next up, Zach Walder. Yeah, he was a pinch hitter before, but he pinch hit for the DH. So still in the ball game. Off to the left side in the screen. One ball, one strike. That's big for Zach Walters to get a couple of at bats during a game. Young guy, probably having trouble coming off the bench. Even though he's been successful as a pinch hitter. When you're a young kid, you're used to playing every day. It's a tough adjustment. Start dissecting every single pitch of every at bat. Well, if you get four or five, whatever. But when you get one, you're, you start thinking, well, that first pitch fastball, I should have hit that. That curveball was right there. And instead of the whole game to analyze, you're analyzing every single pitch of one at bat. One and two after that big curveball dropped in. Then he goes with the high heat, and Walters holds up. Saturday night. Nine o'clock, Mass and two. Johnny and Ray at eight thirty with Nets extra pregame. Yeah, I'm on an hour earlier tomorrow night. So get your rest. Take a nap during the day. Big curveball, two outs, and let Bob and I put you to sleep. We are good at that. This would be a good one to forget very quickly. By the time I get to the elevator, which is two steps behind us, I will have already forgotten about this one. Forgot about what? Exactly. Ramos sold for three with a couple of ground balls and a strikeout. So one out away from their 21st win of the year. About to go six games over 500. Seattle's trailing. They could be widening their lead in the West. And a fastball. Ramos lines a base hit. Second hit of the year. He's aboard for Ian Desmond. Buffalo check it in late. Not giving away any at bats. And a nice piece of hitting right there. First Desmond. knock of the night for him. Third knock of the night for the Nats. Against Malone tonight, over two of the walk. That's Paul Lowe. He 
He is one for two career against the right hander Rodriguez and the counts even. Turn 0 for 2 night with a walk into a 1 for 3 night right here with the base hit. Off speed, keeping the ball down, it's 1 and 2. Short momentary bobble by Lowry in the ball game over. Two hours and 43 minutes for the A's to take apart the Nats tonight. Eight nothing out hitting them 12 3. Final words from Oakland from the booth in a moment.